Good morning. This is the second YouTube video. Um, today I want to talk a little bit about what we talked about last time. Not very much, but just as a precursor to go into today's topic, which last time we talked about, did you start your day? I'm probably going to ask that all the time. Did you wake up this morning and create your day? Create what you wanted, um, decide how you wanted your day to look, and set that intention, a strong intention, for what you would like, because your intention is your power. We talked last week a little bit about uh, a mental diet, deciding what things you're going to think and what things you're not going to think anymore, and how you would like that to be for you. Um, taking certain words out of your di out of your vocabulary that aren't serving to you anymore, and being as strict with them as you'd be if you were on any uh, food diet. If you couldn't have sugar because sugar would cause your body to go into havoc, you'd stay off of sugar if you were committed to that kind of a diet. And so I'm just asking you, if you recommit to yourself to have a mental word diet, that you take things out that are abusive or unkind about yourself on any level, and when they come in, I, I, don't, I don't eat that anymore. I don't speak those kinds of things to myself anymore. That's nothing I, that I want to speak. And put those things aside and, and practice that kind of a mental diet uh, in your life and see what happens. Um, amazing things have definitely come my direction because of doing those kinds of things. And... By doing your mental diet, by watching the things you speak and how you incorporate those those words and things into your life, is going to play, start giving you a ground, a, a playground, a bigger playground to play on, with who you really are. <clears throat> we're such divinely powerful, infinite beings, and that's where I want to really take it today for a few minutes is on how powerful we really are. We have the power to change anything. Nobody can think for us. Nobody is thinking our thoughts for us. Nobody's thinking what we should think about. Nobody else can say, this is what you, who you are and this is what you need to think about. They can tell you that, but it's ultimately up to you to decide that's what I'm going to think about. And we get drowned a lot of times in all kinds of emotions and um, beliefs and stories that we've incorporated or took on from other people and decided... Yep, what they told me about me must be true. And then we've embodied it. But we made the decision. That's the important part. We made the decision to believe what somebody else said about us or told us we were from the time we were young. Maybe they said you're, you're shy, you're not very outgoing, you're... Um, oh, shoot, there's so many things that somebody could tell you. You know what they are. You live with them every day. Um, or you're aware of them at any rate. Go in and decide, is that really who I want to be? If it's not who you want to be, put yourself on a diet towards that particular thing. Take that out. If somebody says, who are you? Don't describe yourself that way anymore. Describe yourself as, as you who you would like to be instead of what you think that everybody else already sees you. Well, I kind of know I'm really shy, but that's just kind of who I am. I've been told it since I was a little kid. Do you want to be shy? Because you're the one that determines if you are. If you want to be more outgoing, if you're attracted to that, like I love to see outgoing people doing outgoing doing things where they're connecting with other people and they're just not shy about it. I wish that was me. It is you. It is you. And it's your soul asking you, let go of that belief that you are anything less than this. And then once you start letting go of that belief, something new will surface within you that is you. And you'll start being that person and people will start repeating from your outward world in. You'll start getting the shadow effects on the wall of how outgoing you are and how loving you are and how kind you are. Whatever it is you set your intention, this is who I'm going to be from this moment forward. Um, but just for myself, I'm going to use myself as the example because that's the safest one because it's me. I set the standard for myself to live my life as though I was God incarnate. And it's been this way for, I've been practicing this for quite a few, quite a number of years. Um, and obviously I work on it a little here and a little there and getting a little better and a little better and a little better at feeling that. So I had to first ask myself what would be the attributes and uh, what is God? So I started to start reading about what God was to me and God can be a ma many things. It can be source, it can, it can be energy. To me God is an energy presence of love. A great big energy presence of love, bigger than anything that I can conjure in my imagination right now and I've got a pretty big imagination. So I ask myself all the time, if God is love or if this energy source is love, whatever that is, how can I best manifest it in, in my life? So every day my thoughts have to be geared towards that kind of thinking. How do I be this? How, what, what, would, what would love do in this particular moment? Which is pretty much my mantra. 
every day. What would love do in this moment? How would love show up? What would love express? Um, so a really short example of that, I was headed out to Sedona a few weeks, well, yeah, about two weeks ago now, and I was heading down there. So I was packing my bags, packed them down to my car the night before, and was putting my bags in the back seat of the, the car. Come walking, I live in an apartment complex at the moment, and I was walking around the corner, it was about nine o'clock at night, and there was a group of boys, maybe seven or eight of them, between the ages of six and 12. And they were all hovered around this tree, and they'd taken some sticks and literally scraped all the bark off of this tree, as high up as their arms could go, and then whacked the branches and all the leaves off the tree as far up as their arms could go. And they were laughing and having a good time, and talking with each other. And I asked myself, what would love do? What would love do in this moment? So I did what, what love dictated inside of me as me, and I walked over and I slipped my shoes off. The boys were looking at me rather curiously, and got my bare feet and I walked right up to the tree and I sat Indian style in front of it. I placed my hands on its now naked bark, closed my eyes, breathed a couple of breaths and then said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my brother, that these boys didn't know what they were doing. And of course the little boys started looking at me like I was nuts. Something was wrong with me. And one of the older boys who was around 11, maybe 12 years old, he's like, I don't know what you're saying. And I said, you've stripped your brother of his, of his bark. He's like, that's a weird thought. He's not my brother. He's like, you're weird. And he walked off. The other boys kind of gathered around a little closer. And the youngest of the group said to me, I don't understand. How is a tree my brother? It's just a tree. And I said, well, every time you breathe in, the tree breathes out. And we need each other. You breathe in oxygen, he breathes out oxygen. You breathe out carbon dioxide, he breathes in carbon dioxide. We are symbiotic life hosts to each other. We support each other in this life. And I said, this tree is consciousness. And it stands here offering you nothing but its love, its shade, its protection, its the sound of the leaves moving in the wind. And it's growing and it's immobile. You're mobile. So this tree stood here while you abused it. It couldn't run away, couldn't go anywhere. It just allowed you to strip it of all its bark and to beat its leaves and tear off, tear off with the little branches. By now, pretty much the little boys are all sitting on the ground listening. And they asked me, well, what can we do? And one boy said, my mother never told me that the trees were our brothers. And I said, well, maybe nobody ever told your mother. Maybe that's what you get to do. So we had a little discussion about what to do with the bark that they'd already stripped off. They were beginning to feel some, some thoughts about what had happened in their unawareness. And so I suggested maybe we gather the bark up and break it down into smaller pieces and tuck it around the root of the, the base of the tree so the tree could use it if it wanted for, for nutrients. And we talked 10, 15 minutes. And then one of the little boys said, can I can I bless the tree? And I said, sure. So he came, put his little hands on the tree and offered the tree a little sweet blessing right from his heart and said he was sorry and that he would respect the trees. And I talked to him about respecting the grass and the birds and the bugs and all life everywhere, all of human beings. And then I slipped my shoes on and didn't say anything more and walked upstairs. Well, I greeted my one of my children up there and they were like, my goodness, Mom, I'm glad I was on the fourth floor watching this. That would have just been embarrassing to be down there. Why do you do that? And I told her, because all of these, if I live by what I really say, all of these people are my children or they're mine. I consider them mine. I might not put those boys to bed every night. I might not get them up and feed them breakfast. I might not get them to school. I don't do the mundane things, but I was given a small brief moment of time to spend with those boys. What was I going to give them? And I wanted to give them what I believed to be most true about me, that I'm love. And I'm, a dem I'm a manifesting it on, in everything I do, everything I say, everywhere I go. And so it's in my conscious thoughts every single day. And it's been a practice for me to put it there. It didn't start out that way. It started out first. I was looking for everybody to love me. Who could love me? How could I get people to love me? What could I do? And so I began doing acts, what I called acts of service, but they were really acts of survival. I was looking for ways to survive in a world where I felt like I was dying because I didn't know what it was like to love myself. So I would make 
food for people, go tend their children, to do whatever it was that I could do for them. And I was calling it in my, in my um, sleep and state, because I wasn't awake enough to know then, but I was calling it acts of love and service. And really what it boiled down to, it was acts of survival. I was, I'd learned how to survive as a young child throughout my childhood by doing things for other people so that I could get that little tiny feedback of a smile or a thank you or something that said, wow, Jeanette, I see you and I love you and I appreciate you. And I would eat it up really quick. But it's like I tell my clients, it's cotton candy love. It's not real. It goes in and it dissipates in your mouth instantly and you need a little more now. And you leave a little more and a little more and a little more before you become addicted to a way of surviving, which is coming from your three lower energy centers. You're just trying to survive from those lower energy centers, and it's not heart-based yet. So as I began to learn to do what, I, what I'm suggesting to you is to take that mental diet, to truly take your words. Who do you want to be, and who are you, are you pretending to be? Who are you saying, this is who I've always been? Well, pretend to be something different. Pretend in your heart, and who do I really want to be? Choose a greater version of what you're being now. Choose something bigger, better, wiser, more loving, and put that forward to, to yourself. And you don't have to prove anything to the world. You have nobody to prove it to. You're just doing it for yourself. And what happens is when you fill yourself up with who you really want to be, and it starts to take root and take hold, and it starts to grow really deep and it starts to really become the core essence of who you are because now you wake up you don't have to think about what words you can put it you're being it you're being it every day then what happens is all you do is start giving it away because now it's just it's overflowing your tree you've produced a tree of everlasting life or fruit forever and it will always produce out for you and I just there's one thing if I can remember the lyrics because I don't want to sing it there is a poem that was made into a song years ago and the other morning I woke up with this in my head and it was I was actually singing it when I woke up and so I'm gonna imagine you some of you probably all of you've heard it maybe you haven't it's called Master the Tempest is Raging and it is a song sung by some people some groups um, but I heard it more as the lyrics and just the first two verses so if you would just imagine for a minute that these two verses are actually not two beings talking to each other, two different people talking to each other, but an inner conversation you're having with your beliefs, your stories, your fears, with the greater version of you, the greatest side of you that you're discovering every day. So let's see if I can get these words correct. And bear with me if I don't. I'm going to get them really, really close. It starts out, the beliefs are speaking. Master, the tempest is raging, the billows are tossing high, the, sh the dark clouds are shadowing us. Uh, oh. The dark clouds are shadow us, um, no shelter or help is nigh. Carest thou not that we perish? How canst thou lie asleep when each moment is madly threatening a grave in the angry deep? Those are your fears. Those are your beliefs. That's oh my heck! If I, I I'm gonna die if I don't if I don't get this. These are survival skills that are speaking. Survival instincts coming up. You got to do this. You got to do this, or you're not gonna survive. But then the greater part of you steps in and says, "The winds and the waves shall obey my will. Peace, be still. Whether the wrath of the storm-tossed sea, or demons, or men, or whatever it be, no waters can swallow the ship where lies." the master of ocean and earth and sky. They all shall sweetly obey my will. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. They all shall sweetly obey my will. Peace, peace, be still. When I heard that in the morning, I knew exactly. Any time those thoughts came into my head, any time I would have a thought that I did not want to be there, that was threatening to me or felt fearful or felt in any way opposite to me being love. I just offer it that same station, or station, that same statement. Peace be still. I am, it, my outer environment is not bigger than who I really am. Neville Goddard calls it, are you the grasshopper or are you the mountain? Don't be the grasshopper. Your problems are not the mountain. 
You are greater than anything outside of you. Anything. Your environment, anything that happens, you are greater. You're the thinker. You're the one that decides. What does it get to feel like? What does it get to be like? How much do, energy do I get to invest in this moment, in this thought, in this energy? You decide. That's what makes you so unlimited is you get to choose. Choose to tell your fears to be still. And you can do it with so much love. So much love, just like that, that, that poem, Peace Be Still. And they sweetly obeyed. It may take effort and some time of peace, be still. A little panic there for a minute as you build the skill of really knowing who you are. So pick today. Choose today. Choose every single morning you wake up. Who am I? Who am I going to be today? Who will I be? And then live by it that day. Live by it. And if you slip off, so what? Get back up and look at it again. Okay. Live by it. Those little slip-offs are reminding you how often we weren't living by it. The old patterns were running us more than the new pattern. So I bless you with so much love. And I hope today, tomorrow, you just have fantastic days being who you really want to be and not any idea preconceived by anybody else that you bought into and made your own story that that was who you are. Pick the one you really want to be. I am love. Talk to you later.